Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems beginning with page number 1002. 1002, please turn to it. Yesterday we stopped at number 9 and we're going to pick up the story from number 10. In question number 10 it says that the density of an object is found by dividing by dividing its mass by its volume. So if you want to find the density, it is found by dividing the mass by volume. And then the question simply is, how do we, it says which of the following equation gives the mass in terms of the density and volume. If you're looking for mass, you simply multiply both sides by volume. So we can get rid of the volume and mass is simply equal to volume times density. It is that simple. There is nothing in it at all. Number 11. Sometimes they're just too silly. Number 11 says, equation of a line that is perpendicular to this equation right here. negative 2x plus 3y is equal to 6. Now, if the two lines are perpendicular, what we need to know here is that if the two lines are perpendicular, then the product of their slope, product of this slope, this line m1 times the product of the slope of the line that is perpendicular to it, m2, has to equal negative 1. In other words, if you, if you were to solve this for m1, m1 is equal to negative 1 over m2. In other words, if the two lines are perpendicular to each other, their, sl their slopes have to be reciprocal of each other, has, have to be negative reciprocal of each other. And that's all we need to understand. Here, the, the coefficients are 2 and 3. Whatever the correct answer is, whatever the correct answer is, this 3y has to come over here, and this 2 has to go over there, and one is negative, one is positive, which means the slope of this line is negative, the slope of this line has to be positive. They both need to be positive. That's all it is. What, what, this, what this part is here, we're not interested in. This is what we're looking for. And if you look at the answer choice, if you look at the, all the answer choices there, only, the only one we are where the coefficient, where the coefficients are switched, this is 2, this is 3, and this is 3, this is 2, the coefficients are switched, and one of them is, uh, one of them is negative, the other uh, one of them is going to give us negative because negative over positive, so this one has to be positive. The only answer choice which has a coefficient of 3 and 2 is answer choice A. And that's all we need to do here. That's all we need to do here. But just to amuse you and just to show you how, that, how this actually goes, we're going to quickly solve it. Answer is A as you can see here. That's the only one with the coefficient of 3 and 2. Coefficient has to be switched. This, this is Two, you get the idea. Let's find out very quickly the slope of this line. In order to find the slope, you have to solve for y. So 3y is equal to, this 2x is going to go over there, 2x plus 6. Divide by 3, we get 2 thirds x plus 6 over 3. The slope of is 2 thirds, which means the slope of the line that we're looking for, m2, has to be negative 3 halves. And I'm going to quickly show you that the answer choice a does have a slope of negative three half. It has to. It's the only one is the only one where the coefficient will switch. So we don't have to do anything else. Answer choice A says 3x plus 2y is equal to 6. Solve for y. So 2y is equal to bring the 3x to this side, you're going to become negative 3x plus 6. And y is equal to negative 3 over 2 x plus 6 over 2. You see? Negative 3 over 2. The answer is A. None of the answer choices are going to work. For example, in answer choice B, very quickly, in answer choice B, it says 3x plus 4y. We can stop right there. 
because the original one was negative 2 and 3. If neg negative 2 and 3, it has to be 3 and 2. It's 3 and 4. It doesn't matter what appears here. It's not going to give you the same slope. Same thing with C, same thing with D. They're not going to work. You can try them out yourself. Answer is A. Number 12. In number 12 we are told that one half y is equal to 4. And the other one says x minus one half y is equal to 2. Huh. It can be that simple. It is that simple. What's the value of x? This is just 2 two times in here. They tell you 1 over half y is 4. Just put it in there. So x minus 4 is equal to 2. Because they tell us 1 half y is equal to 4 right here. If 1 half y is equal to 4, put it in here. x minus 4 is equal to, therefore x is equal to 6. But oh, this is too childish. x is equal to 6. The answer is D. Number 13. In number 13 we are dealing with two inequalities. The first one says y is less than 3x plus 1 and the other one says x minus y is greater than 1. What is the question asking? What's the value of x? What is the value of x? It says a system of system of equation above has I'm reading the wrong one. We are on number we are on number thirteen. Which of the following order oh they're giving us they're giving us four ordered pairs and our job is to find out which of these four ordered pairs satisfy both of this inequality. It's quite straightforward. Let's just try one by one. Answer choice A. Answer choice A says negative two and negative 1. Now, in a situation like this, when you have two equations here, and we have to see which one, which of these uh, uh, ordered pairs satisfy these two equations, in this case these two inequality, instead of equations, there are two of them obviously, try the one that is easier first. Don't deal with the, don't deal with the more complicated one. This is going to take more time. This is more straightforward. Let's try it out. Put down negative 2 and negative 1. So x is equal to negative 1 minus negative 2 negative 1 and a positive 2 is positive 1 and positive 1 is not oh positive 1 is greater than 1 positive 1 did I? ah I, I messed up, I made a mistake I made a big time mistake, I switched, I wasn't paying attention, I was, I was too busy talking negative 2 is the x, negative 2 is the x and negative 1 is the y, I almost I was almost about to pick the right, wrong answer Let's do it again. This is wrong. Let's do it again. X minus Y is equal to 1. X is negative 2. I don't know how I made the switch. Minus a negative 1. Negative 2 plus 1 which is negative 1 and negative 1 is not greater than 1. Negative 1 is not greater than 1. The answer is not A. Let's try B. B says negative 1 minus a 3. Negative 1 minus a 3 is negative 4, and negative 4 is not greater than 1. It has to be greater than 1. We are trying, we are working with the second inequality, not the first, first inequality. The second one is easier to work with. Answer is not B. Answer is not B either, because it has to satisfy both inequalities, obviously, whichever, whichever order pairs the answer. It has to satisfy both inequality, therefore try the one that is easier. I'm, not, I'm working the second one. Let's look at C. C says 1 and 5. 1 and 5. x minus y, we're told it has to be more than 1. 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. And negative 4 is not more than 1. Negative 4 is not more than 1. Answer is not C. It has to be D, obviously. Correct answer has to be D, obviously, because it's the only one left. And since it's the only one left, I'm going to do it separately. 
I'm going to do it separately so I can show you that it satisfies both inequalities. Answer choice D says 2 and negative 1. First this one, x minus y is more than 1. x is 2 minus y, which is going to give us positive 3, and positive 3 is more than 1, you see? It works. Now this one, y is less than 3x plus 1. y, which is negative 1, is less than 3 times 2 plus 1, which also works. It works because it doesn't matter what this is. This is some positive quantity, this is some negative quantity. Of course that works. The answer is D. Let's go to number 14. Number 14, we have a chart here, uh, generals and orthopedics. Generals and orthopedics. Some of them teach and some of them do research. Question is, what are the odds What are the odds of picking orthopedic who does research? If you were to pick if you were to pick one run one person at random out of the six hundred and seven people if I were to pick 1% at random out of the 607 people, what are the odds that the person that I pick happens to be an orthopedic who is engaged in research? These are the orthopedics here. 190 of them are engaged in teaching. 74 are the, orto are the people we're looking for who are orthopedic and also engage in research. 74. 74 out of 607. 607. At this point, we're just going to approximate. Let's approximate, let's pretend that 74, I'm going to pretend that 74 is 75, I'm going to pretend 607 is 600. And what's the reason, and what's the reason that we can get away with it? The reason we can get away with it is because we're not performing an open heart surgery, it is only an SAT for crying out loud. There are four answer choices, and they are far enough apart, they're not close to each other, they are far enough apart, which means we can approximate, we can approximate a little bit and still be able to recognize the right answer. I'm going to pick up this thing on the top here so we have some room, 75 over 600, 600, or we can continue here if you like. Let's do it on the top. Seventy-five over six hundred. Let's divide top and bottom by twenty-five. Let's divide top and bottom by twenty-five. We know seventy-five has three twenty-five. What about 600? Well, I know 100 has 425. If 100 has 425, then 600 must have 6 times 4, 24. There we go. You see how simple it is? Dividing top divided by 25. Nicely, it, this one works out very nicely, a multiple of 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3, and we end up with 8. 1 8. And 1 8 is 12.5%. Which means the correct answer, whatever it is, has to be something close to 12.5%. And that's answer choice A. Because in answer choice A, we have 12.2%. Answer is A. Before we go to the next problem, let me quickly make you understand how, how do we know that 1.8 is 12.5%. These are some of the basic things you must know by heart. You shouldn't have to reach for the calculator, you shouldn't have to reach for the bloody thing every 3 seconds. Some basic things you know you must know by heart. How do we know that 1 8 is 12 and a half percent? I'm going to show you very quickly here. How do we know that? Because we know that 1 4 is 25 percent. Don't we? And if we were to take a half of this amount, half of 1 fourth, half of 1 fourth, 
is one eighth. And if you're going to take a half of this amount, you have to take a half of this amount. And half of 25 is 12 and a half. That's all. In other words, one eighth is 12 and a half. You should similarly, you should similarly be able to approximate one sixth. There is no reason why you cannot approximate it during the exam. Let's do it very quickly one sixth. One third is approximately 33 percent. Approximately. Therefore, one sixth, which is one half of one third. One half of one third is one sixth. One sixth, since we're taking half here, we have to take a half over here. In other words, one sixth should be approximately half of 33. Half of 32 is 16. So it's 16 and a half. One sixth is approximately 16 and a half percent. And that's all you need in the exam. You don't need the accurate, precise figures to locate the right answer. You're not a machine. Just think. Number 15. In number 15, it's a very long problem. I'm going to leave it up to you to read the whole thing. But basically what is going on is that they did some polling, they did some survey, and they asked people, are you satisfied with the air quality in your city? Are you satisfied with the air quality in the city? And they found out that 78% of 1,000 surveyed said yes. One more time. So we did a survey. We wanted to find out what do people think about the air quality in, your, in my town. So I went around and I picked 1,000 people at random and I asked a simple question. Are you satisfied with the air quality in the town? And they said, yes, 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 I am. Now they give us three answer choices. Now they give us three statements. And our job is to figure out which of these three statements is true based on what we just said. First statement says that 78% of all, of all, will say yes. In other words, just because I surveyed just because I picked 1,000 people at random and out of those 1,000 people, 78% said that yes, we are satisfied we are with the air quality. Does that, not, that does not necessarily mean that if I were to survey, in which case, if I were to ask every single person in the city, every single person, if there are 3 million people, I will ask all 3 million of them, every one of them, are you satisfied with the air quality? And what the first statement is telling is that saying that is that 78% of all people will give us the same response. No, we cannot we cannot jump from that to that. What we can say is approximately 78% should say yes based on our survey. But we cannot say 78% will say yes. That statement is incorrect. Had it says approximately, that would have been a different story. It says of all the people. 78% will satisfy. That's not correct. Answer choice one is wrong. Second statement says, if you were to ask another 1,000 people, another 1,000 people, another 1,000 will give same response. No, no. Just because. The 1,000 people that you happen to pick at random, 78% of them said yes. That does not mean that if I were to pick 100,000 people and 100,000 people and 100,000 people, that in every single sample of 1,000 people, I'm going to get exactly 78% saying yes. That is not correct. That is not the right inference. The statement 3 says, 78% in a, in a different town. 78% a different sound will say yes. That is simply ludicrous. That's simply insane. That is the, that is the definition of insanity. I cannot just go to the cleanest town in the, in the on the planet and find out that 78% of people said yes, we are satisfied with air quality, and then go to a different town in, on the planet, the most polluted city in the planet, and ask the people over there, are you satisfied? And 78% of those are going to say yes, just because 78% of the town and the other people said yes. That's silly. So the question was, which of these three statements is, is correct? The answer is none. The answer is none. The answer is A. None of these statements are true. 
The answer is A. We're going to stop here. That is number 15. We're going to pick up the story from number 16. Because 16, 17 and 18, they all go together. So we're going to stop right here. We're going to pick up from 16 tomorrow when we meet. Okay. In the meantime, if you're preparing for the SAT and if you need help, if you would like to hire me as your tutor, you can reach me at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. I can help you with the math part, I can help you with the vocabulary part, and I can also help you with the grammar part, the reading and the writing part there. Uh, just send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Alright? Bye.